I don't know what the end game is for Trump. I mean, I know the end game is for Trump. He wants to stay president. It's not going to happen. There's there's no evidence of voter fraud. All the Republican, uh, you know, election officials say nothing happened, um, unless they can convince people uh, in each state legislature to that are controlled by Republicans to give the electoral votes to Trump, despite Democrats winning. And I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I don't think they're going to take the election. What I do think is going to happen is that they're trying to create more and more uncertainty, more and more distrust with the system, delegitimize, you know, Biden from the beginning. They can't say that, you know, where's his birth certificate? We know he was born in Scranton. He made that very clear. We know that he was born in Scranton. Um, so they can't say that. But what they can do is, you know, delegitimize him in other ways. And, you know, that's why they don't have to work with him when he's in the Senate. They can say, oh, you know, he's not the real president. And they can do this for the next four years uh, until, you know, uh, they, they try and retake the White House. So it's just destabilization. It's trying to hope for them, I'm sure, come up with some, you know, how the Supreme Court or other courts create some you know, principles or, you know, create some rulings that say, oh, maybe the state legislature is the only one that can control elections going forward. So, uh, you know, I don't think most of them are doing it are doing it because they love Donald Trump. I think they're doing it because one, he's complaining and a whiner, and two, they can find a way to you know do more voter suppression in the meantime. You know, and, and it's it's interesting when they do things like this, there are opportunities for them, like you said, to, to do more voter suppression. Um, this is an exercise. They have a campaign account, uh, the Donald Trump campaign account, which does not have a lot of money, but they're raising into it to hire lawyers to basically experiment with their next voter suppression tactics, which arguments work, which ones don't. Yeah. Uh, ne- never let a good crisis go to waste. And then they also have this, this obnoxious a Republican who will say whatever. And so they're, they're also able to like exercise their worst messaging attacks ever that, you know, someone like a Marco Rubio couldn't do, but my <laughs> God, if they can get away with it and make it mainstream and, you know, they might do it with Kamala and say, you know, she's not, I mean, what a, that, that's, they're going to test it out. Um, I think it's an interesting point. Very smart. Yeah. You know, I think that like they, you know, ahead of time, the Supreme court said only state legislatures can, you know, deal with election laws. And so I think they're really trying to hammer that point home. And I think also a lot of them are just terrified of Trump, right? We saw David, David Perdue and uh, Kelly Loeffler, the senators from uh, Georgia, they're terrified that he's going to say anything bad about them. So they wrote that terribly written letter to the Republican secretary of state, Brad Raffensperger, saying, you got to resign. I guess you didn't do as much voter suppression as Brian Kemp. And there's no evidence of that, but they're afraid that uh, Trump's going to tweet something nasty about them or not come down and help get out the vote. So I will say that hopefully this creates a Republican civil war, you know, because, uh, you know, if Trump's side, if he's mad at Republicans, you know, he doesn't want to help them out. We can see that. I, I, I don't see that happening. I think that they <laughs> love having him do all the dirty work for them uh, and so that it's mainstreamed. I yeah. really think that's it. I mean, and of course, there's a Senate race, the two Senate races. That's, that's one thing, but I don't know how long they can drag this out for. I mean, this is I don't see. Do you see this going on for the next month, almost two months until the uh, the, the Georgia primary? The Georgia, whatever, the, the, the runoff. runoff. Yeah, I can't imagine it happening because at some point, you know, Biden's team will talk about the transition does have to get in there. They do have to start, you know, changing the passwords and learning how the systems work. Oh, it'll be really easy because <laughs> yeah. their transition team is made up of a bunch of Google executives and tech executives. Right, that's true. Who will yeah. just be like, oh, we're so sorry. We locked you out. We just changed the security so many, codes. <laughs> so many people have been there before during the Obama administration, so they know their way around. But, that's true. Uh, <laughs> my they can literally that- shut down their accounts. <laughs> My my and also you know they all do, none of them use uh, you know government email right they, they all using like, Jerry Kushner and all of them <laughs> they weren't using secure email I thought that was a big deal at some point um, but I thought they cared a lot about emails yeah they really care about the security of Americans American email Trump using his BlackBerry unsecured uh, tweet whatever he wants yeah I, I mean I think that like at some point they're gonna have to accept that Trump is not gonna be president. And Trump is either going to have to accept it or throw a huge fit and bring down the Republican Party with him. I'm just I'm just being hopeful. You know, I'm just really ho- yeah. being hopeful that he burns it all down. Oh, I just think they don't they don't care about him. They'll no, let him, them embarrass. You know, he's embarrassing himself and it's great. And it'll be it'll be exciting to be done with him because he's such a, a, a devil to work with. But also, you know, he can exercise all of their their greatest imaginative like the, the the you know, Jeff Sessions, his imagination must be running wild right now <laughs> with all of the the voter suppression tactics that they can use. Well, you look at Jeff Sessions, is a good, actually a good example, because Trump used him, used his early endorsement and then didn't like what he did. Push him aside, destroyed his political career. Yeah. career. No one's crying for Jeff Sessions, obviously, but it's sort of funny to see Trump his whole life using people and then tossing them aside, running over them whenever he doesn't need them anymore. Now Republicans are going to kind of do that to him. So uh, I'm not rooting for any, any side of it, but it is kind of nice to see Trump get his just rewards in that way. So fascinating. 
All right, uh, let's switch topics. Uh, we have been here before. <laughs> That's our favorite one. Have we been here before? We've been here before. How do we push left, left when big money and corporate interests are pushing right? In these times yes. reported that one third of Biden's Pentagon transition team is funded by the weapons industry. Shocker. Three of the team members were most recently employed by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, which takes cash from Northrop Grumman. I can never say it. Lockheed Martin and Raytheon. They need ease, easier to say names. We do not need these people obviously leading the way on the international stage when it comes to, to spending big government money or uh, public, you know, international welfare. Major problem. Um, how does Biden think he can get away with this? in this kind of era, like the, the, with the, the temperature that's out there right now in the Democratic Party, I, I just, it blows my mind that these folks think they can get away with this. Well, you're seeing assaults from all sides at the progressive side, right? You're seeing the centrists in the state, in the uh, House of Representatives, now in the Senate. Uh, Doug, Doug Jones is the one who said maybe it wasn't uh, progressive's fault. Who would have thought that? The guy from Alabama. Uh, you know, so you're seeing an attack on progressives from all sides. They're trying to kind of, you know, destroy them. They're trying to discredit them. And they're trying to say, we're the big, the big boys and girls in the party. And uh, we, we know what's right. You know, that, I think that's what we're seeing. And I'm not saying it's all coordinated because Democrats will never be that coordinated. But I will say that it's clear that's what they're doing you know they had those unity commissions with bernie sanders his campaign and uh this summer like, you know you're part of it oh it was like, a different hey, unity commission yeah yeah, yeah right yeah sorry i but, was on the other um, one <laughs> it worked out well um and sure <laughs> you know so they had all these policies <laughs> i'm sorry i mean it was a, a, a tough time for uh, everybody the last bunch of years it's okay i got to time. know um i got to know uh kamala harris's sister and i got to know uh joe biden's campaign manager and looking back at it, I'm like, oh, those were the people running the commission that set the terms for the Democratic primary. They always knew. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, we were stuck with them now. It's just a matter of how do we uh, how do we move forward with that? And again, it's a, we're in a bit of a war right now or a little uh, a, not, not quite a civil war, but a, a big battle between progressives and centrists and fighting over who was the worst. And I think that ad goes to the, the Biden you know, cabinet that, that makes a difference there too, as well. If they can discredit progressives then they can discredit uh, the complaints, but the cabinet, that being said, there are a lot of people in the, in the uh, cabinet, the list of people who might join. There's a lot of people in the transition team that progressives should have a big objection to, you know, the one I'm looking at right now, uh, we want to see Bernie Sanders or someone from the left be the labor secretary, right? That's, that's really important, especially given mm -hmm. not having a Republican or having probably a Republican Senate, right? So a lot of rules are going to, have to be changed. A lot of things are going to, have to be done within the administration. And this guy, Seth Harris, who was yeah. one of the guys who created the template basically for prop 22, which said, all right, you know, Uber, obviously in California, Prop 22, uh, they trick people into voting to take away benefits from Uber and Lyft drivers and other yeah. gig workers. And so that's a big one. You know, that's a big one that progressives are going to have to uh, really push back on. I don't know if he was on that list so that progressives do push back on that and they can put in someone moderate who they uh, know they'd rather have anyways. But I think progressives are going to have to pick their spots. You know, I think running around, you know, trying to stop every single person is going to be tough. I think to some degree there's people who, you know, especially on the transition team are involved because they have government experience, not necessarily for their ideology. But, uh, right. you know, I think there's going to, have to be some battles that are chosen. You know, I think that, yeah. Well, it's interesting. So, you know, you have groups like Sunrise and, and Justice Democrats who are pushing for a Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren as um, labor secretary, which I, I do not agree with that strategy at all. I think that's basically caging them in. Yeah. Um, you know, ask Robert Reich about his experience working in the Clinton administration, uh, Bill Clinton, who he knew since they were Rhodes Scholars. And he was even caged in. Yeah. Um, Keith Ellison as attorney general, I think, would be a, a, a brilliant move. Uh, you know, will that happen? Probably not, because Keith Ellison and the Obama administration did not uh, get along. And that's why it's important to know these dynamics, because, you know, there's wh where you have leverage is important, where are their pressure points. If there's a personality issue, if Obama specifically does not like Keith Ellison, which is why he he uh, got involved in that DNC race with him, you probably don't have a lot of leverage there. But there is a lot of leverage. And I mean, it is I just think it's important for us to be exposing these names and talking about their backgrounds because it's embarrassing for Biden. Biden's about to walk into a spiraling downward economy, like the Great Depression level era economy, right? And his solution is gig 
like not protecting workers. That's not how we got out of the Great Depression. So this just seems, I feel like we have to keep naming names, not necessarily saying who we want, but exposing who they are so that they're embarrassed not to use these, these like app sharing companies and securities companies. And I mean, this is just, just embarrassing. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.